The Green Revolution started with a man named Dr. Borlaug. Dr. Borlaug is considered to be the father of the Green Revolution, a wave of farm research starting in the late 1960s that changed agriculture worldwide. The Green Revolution has spread across the world in the late 20th century. The Green Revolution originated in South America with Borlaug trying to help the farmers with the problem of collecting wheat. Borlaug knew that in Japan, there was wheat with short stalks and heavy heads. So he decided to breed wheat until they were able to have strong stalks enough to hold up their heavy heads. With more wheat, Borlaug and his colleagues began to set up storage bins leading to the farmers joining the world market. This was the beginning of the Green Revolution. When South America was flourishing, Borlaug and his colleagues had heard that the world was suffering from famine and they decided to venture out and help the countries in need. The next step was to go to India. Borlaug had recalled during an interview, they had a field day, the day I was coming. Rice had been the staple of the Indian diet and importing crops had become expensive, but Borlaug came to the rescue and ordered 450 tons of seeds. India and Pakistan had produced so much grain that there wasn't enough farmers to harvest them. They were also given chemical fertilizers to help speed up the growth of the grain. Soon enough, India had finally became self-sufficient. The next step was to help Africa, but Borlaug had lost his support to help Africa because of the environmentalists. The environmentalists believed that using chemicals to enhance food production was dangerous towards the environment and they would ruin what nature had intended to do. It was difficult but he was able to begin work on Africa. The techniques used before in South America and India were not working because how different the area was there. Once said by a plant geneticist. Prior to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations joining forces with the Rockefeller Foundation, we had discovered that relying on just a few crop varieties wasn't working in Africa. The existing varieties worked well for some farmers, but others were completely left out because no one had bred improved varieties for their area and the existing varieties couldn't be grown. And so we began funding more localized farmer participatory methods of breeding improved crop varieties. That was where we made some breakthroughs with stress tolerant maize hybrids in Kenya and beans, rice, and maize varieties bred in Uganda, all becoming popular with local farmers. But the cost implications of supporting large numbers of local breeding teams and building a large number of local seed enterprises were too great, really, for the Rockefeller Foundation to handle on its own. This gives us a chance to do things on a much expanded scale. Currently, the AGRA, or the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, is funding to help citizens of Africa gain access to financial products and services. The Green Revolution has also caused problems for some of the developing countries. Genetically enhanced plants help with production of food, but they are more demanding for water and now India is slowly drying away. The farmers there are going into debt by investing in more powerful water pumps to retrieve any water that is available. Plants in Africa now need to be constantly modified to become resistant to famine and pests and is beginning to become costly. In all, the Green Revolution was an important event in history because it helped a lot of major developing countries like India and Africa. Despite the positives of the Green Revolution, it also left a lot of negative effects like water slowly drying away and farmers continuously going to debt, trying to invest in more powerful water pumps to be able to grow crops.